Okay. Bye. Happy holidays. And then today we have. Yeah, it was a. Uh, okay, that's it. It was what? Yeah, the the, uh, the voice was not on. <laughs> you guys are fired. <laughs> anyway, it's not so. Like we're even amateurs at this. I know, right? <laughs> Sorry, it was just a rush. That was Van. That you guys couldn't yeah. hear my voice. That was Van. Um, she came in from the beach. So I was sitting down trying to do some jumpers, and she came up behind me and said, are those the dragonfly? So I got really protective, and I said, really? Why would you know these are dragonflies? So she goes, I'm in your group. Anyway, uh, Francis? Are you, are you on right now? Yes, yeah, we are, so are. stop oh, laughing hi. at me. Oh. Um, we have Francis Day here from Arizona, Whoa. and she came. Your mask had to be on, please. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I don't have a mask on because I'm talking. So we have Frances Day here visiting. She's drove in from Arizona. So he, today we have a special visit from two podcast people. All right, yeah. it's one to introduce you. Okay, so happy holidays. My name is Jamie Fang. I'm sorry we didn't introduce ourselves here. Um, we're at Norman's Orchids. And I think Jeff, did you, I share uh, what happened this year with YouTube. They give us numbers and how many people subscribe. We're very mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. um, please subscribe. If you don't, haven't already, please do. But if you're in our VIP group, you really don't have to. But share it with your friends. Get them to subscribe. Um, get everybody growing orchids. You know, give you some peace and love. So today we're just going to walk around. I, I woke up this morning thinking today was our last podcast. I don't know where the days when Jason and I woke up. Jason's here as well, Jeff's brother. I woke up and texting everybody to wear red. I mean, I'm wearing red. <laughs> but Jeff, Jeff called me and says, Jamie, we have one more week, so we don't have to wear red. So <laughs> Roger went and took off his, the only red shirt he had. Um, so... Anyway, so we have one more week. So today, Jeff wanted me to show a little bit of what our orchids.com uh, department is doing. So let's turn the camera to some of the arrangements. Here are some of Eric's arrangement that uh, we get so busy on the dot com. So we would do a lot of every number that we know will sell. So when the order come in, on every day monday tuesday all the way to thursday because we ship we actually even ship friday for next day on saturday so we'll come and grab one and just fill the order because if we had to do one at a time we would never catch up because some some will be like six arrangement we do drop ship so you can order even my jumpers um like this week and last week um we did a lot of really inexpensive with the boots um you could send it to your friend you don't have to send it to yourself and deliver it you can just buy it and tell me who to send it to okay so we could drop ship for you for gifts we're doing a lot of those boots and stuff so everybody's having a good time in the other room maybe we should go there <laughs> anyways so yeah this this is all pre-arranged and then they'll get back to the shipping department they'll stuff it moss it Put in the bag. Hey, Jason, can you bring me one of those? That's already in the brown bag. And Hannah's having a fit. So it gets back to the shipping department and they literally will wrap it in this paper and it's all moss inside and they'll just drop it in a box for you. So it's several steps. Carefully drop it in the box. Sort of. <laughs> so it, yeah, it is really a lot of work doing these arranging, um, not just throw it together but the shipping department do a fabulous job at it so it could get as big as this I need to buy hockey with Kaisha and they could get there's follow auntie look at auntie and the, we could ship this as well we had a client bought 14 of this Monday um, drop ship to auntie has to be next to it how big it is I need to go to look how big it is next to auntie <laughs> Auntie's wearing my um, custom Phalaenopsis mask. So that was a fabric I bought, and we made what twelve of those Phaley yeah. mask. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty big. And yeah, he, that, and he and made all these uh, uh, these arrangements. Right. So yeah, great. This is another famous one. A lot of people like white, obviously. So again, we'll moss that and put it in the brown paper so the moss won't f come out, and then we'll lay it down and ship it. OK. 
okay? So for those of you who don't know, orchids.com, we have a um, not just the hobbyist side of the business, we have the major part is the orchids arrangement section, which I think a lot of you guys don't go to because you know, you're a hobbyist, you like to grow newest stuff, but uh, orchids.com is a separate um, department, which all they do is shipping arrangement. And these people don't care about the names. So half the time we would on the selling bench, we don't have names because they're just um, are just for the dot com site. So we don't have to worry about putting price prices on them or tags on them because they get arranged and they get shipped out with no names because people just Someone's don't care. Asking, are all these on the page? Um, yeah, if you if you go on the orchids.com page, do the uh, arrangement section, all these will be on there. There's, I don't know, 50, 60 different type of arrangement going from $40, $50 up to $350. Um, and then I get a lot of people want to custom. Here's the man that makes them. And here's the man that makes them. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of time, uh, especially my client in LA, would like to get things custom because they don't want to be able to... Um, let people know how much that one just went out the door. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. That one sold. <laughs> <laughs> they go that fast. Yeah, so um, we have an, usually the two benches are all pre arrangement. So we, we start a little early trying to catch up and don't have as much time to, as Norma Eric's flying yes. now today yes. with a retail customer. Um, usually the, this. This used to be all grown bench, but for Christmas holiday, we clear all the benches, and over there in, in the back of this table will be all these pre-arranged already. So when the orders come in, we just pop. I mean, you guys all seen our shipping department. Um, my jumpers now, I'm afraid to give it to them because they're all looking at me like, don't you think we have enough things to do? Um, so there'll be three or four ladies here on Monday. They're all cranking it up. Um, we, we get things ready. When the orders come in, we pop it. Um, pop it into the orders. We also have these neat little thing called unit heat pad. Um, Karen will put them in your arrangement if it needs it. Obviously, if you're going to Florida, we hardly ever put it in because we don't want to burn the plant as well. So don't worry about winter packing. We obviously know what we're doing. You know, Auntie's showing off another mm -hmm. one. She put her little booty in here. Um, I think some, these were not in on the page to show, but a lot of time with holiday time, we will just add, add it into the arrangement. So you may not see this particular one, but like I said, we, we don't have time to change pictures all the time. So, you know, obviously we like the holiday to be festive. So we would always just add it last minute. Um, you will get your heat pad. Um, I think a lot of people has been getting jumpers in, coming in pretty. That's that's very festive with a Christmas bulb. So can you imagine this will get shipped to you, arrive pretty just like your jumpers or your regular orders. Um, they could get- Someone said they took one of the booties and hung it on their tree. Oh, good for <laughs> you. I mean, we have, I have what, four different sizes of booties. But don't forget the booties you can use for vases because um, it's plastic inside. You could just cut some flowers and put it in there. And they get as small as this one plant. So your gift doesn't always have to be hundreds of dollars. Go on the website. There's some very reasonable gift. Um, There's the pack. Right? And look at mm -hmm. down here. These are all ready to go. Oh, you guys are getting pretty good at this. Besides not yeah, turning on the volume. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, we're trying to catch up. Um, the orders are in. Karen will print them out early. Um, that's what, again, like before when we started this, you guys cannot understand why we cannot add an order. You're trying to give me more business, but we cannot take it. We're not stupid. Yeah, it once just it's once out, it's printed, you try and find it. once it's printed, it could have been pulled already, or I got to find your order. For me to do that, it will cost Karen half an hour or other staff all this time trying to find your order and pull it back just to add one plant and readjust your bill. 
it's not worth it for us and we just can't it's not that we're not willing but it's very hard especially days like this i can't find your order i can't even find my own order um sometimes norman has them yeah sometimes normans have them in the back so you know uh, we tag team it count our manager pulls the on sitting alliances calais norman pulls the faley menly so they would <laughs> Count would take the one part of order, fill it, and then toss his order with Norman. Norman finish it off. So, um, it's so it's really really hard to find the orders. So it's not that we're not willing. Um, and then Karen has to be really careful. She could only ship out so many in a day. Um, if it doesn't get shipped out, she has to take the orders back, cancel the shipping label, and then redo it for the next day. So it's really a, a lot of process in the shipping department. Um, this is a nifty little thing I just found. This came in from Thailand. Um, it's kind of cute, especially great for people out in Florida, I think. Um, you could just grow anything in here. Air plants, little baby fails, little miniature stuff. I think Crystal will love these. Um, this is what I found, what, three weeks ago? I haven't had time to work with this. But this is quite exciting. Just throw a plant in there, mist it, and then you have something growing. And uh, you don't even have to mount this. You could actually just throw some moss and then it'll be your mounting. Um, right? Yep. Any questions? Yep. Oh, Jeff, I was telling Jeff, how, what can I say for 15 minutes? Jeff says, you got no problem. So here yeah, I am. Yeah, everybody knows you have no problem for 15 <laughs> minutes. And, um, Thank you for everybody's concern. I think Norman had a few texts and even myself that I've been looking really tired and stressed and everything. I've just been doing a lot of different projects um, from orchids to board meetings. At the end of the year, we always have a lot of board meetings to wrap up the year. So that's one other part that gets me busy. And yesterday we had a conductor playing music in my balcony. So. My life is very full, but I'm healthy, I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. Here's Brian running around. Hey, we gotta get Norman back on. Oh yeah. And uh, this is Jason, this is Jeff's brother. Hey everybody. And Hello. this is Hannah's new sweater. <laughs> right, Miss Hannah. Um, so <laughs> while we get Norman on, the, and Auntie is over there playing with some orchids. This is what oh, she Auntie. does, i.e. Say hi. hi. So she first put them in a tray and see how it works and then she'll put them in the basket. Yeah. And if you need some help? Yeah, it, it takes some jiggles when you try to do four or five plants together. Norman, we're almost ready for you. Uh-oh. Jamie will come. No. And then here's hey. Norman running around trying to get ready. Okay. Did, did you guys want to come out here? Do you have enough yeah. Yeah. to give Norman a few minutes? Mm -hmm. So just a little bit in our showroom. We just haven't had time to grab the faded stuff you know nursery men's work is never finished once in the showroom when the flowers are put if it doesn't get sold obviously it fades so we have to come and clean and put them back into the rifle place in the back um when i shoot picture of those paths that norman cut off it's just been going oh i forgot to turn on my Like these path Norman cut off, he just didn't want them to keep blooming. Then again, they just keep going and going like an energized bunny. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think these were Norman's show and tell last week. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if Norman share, share this one. This is one happy plant. Yeah, that's a lot of buds. That's a lot of buds. <laughs> Three spikes. And this one is fragrant as well. Mm. Oh, wow. Smell this and tell them what it smells like. Grape. Norman, okay. <laughs> you can't. Roger's trying to smell with his big old mask. 
<laughs> oh, we should show your mask. Yeah. It's a dog mask. Can you see? I got Roger and myself and a few people this cute little stocking mask for dogs. Dog lover. As you can tell, I'm a dog lover. Norman ready? And Norman ready. Do you, do you want to go through my, do you show me a little bit of my yeah, jumper just, section? Just okay. When yeah, Norman, I'm about to give you my microphone. I'm doing a special, like I did last week, as a thank you to all the jumpers clients. I'm doing a special with these Pirelli that usually last forever in the boots as well. So look out for these. Um, I think the 26th, we don't have, we don't have a podcast, right? No. So the 26th weekend, we will not have a jumper as well. So we'll both take a break. This is the last week for jumpers, right? Um, we might no. have one more. Norman said we might be able to do one more jumper. I might not do too many, but I probably reserve the right to cancel that thought. <laughs> um, so... Right. If you want to do a little pre-show, you could go ahead. These are my jumpers this week. We hardly ever do pre-show. Dragonfly table. Yeah, I'm doing those dragonfly. Except I may not say dragonfly, so Facebook don't cut me out. Yeah. What a teaser. Teasers. Hey, Norman, say hi. Hello. Okay. So, I don't know whose phone is we're on. behind the scene. We're doing a behind the scene. Trying to get you guys to come over. Norman. I'm going to give you a hand over the microphone to you. Hey, this is the, the plant. Remember the pearly plant? The mother 50 plant. 50-50 lives again. I know. 50-50. They're actually spiking, right? Yeah, so, I, yeah the, the mutation might be different. Hey, this is the, the plant. Oops, i got to turn it down. Thank you. You're welcome. So that's a 50-50. Do you want to see what yeah. the plants look like? Yes. I have, I have, I just sew some, sorry, I just sew some to, I have some pre-jumpers here, um, is it Jean? Yeah, Jean's got these going on here. Jen? Jen, sorry, my eyes are allergy. Oh, she got greedy and took two of them. Yeah, Norma's doing a special. They're 45 and two for 80. So we picked oh, her. Boy. Look at this. She's getting a good strong plant. So hopefully she'll get one out of this. She said she's a good sport. Well, increase the odds is what she calls it. So this is, she's the first one to get it by but the... Even if you don't, you still get an awesome oh, plant. Oh yeah, it's an awesome flower. So yeah. I'll go with you. Okay. Um, you want to give it to your Norma? I'll give it to Norman. Thank you guys. I'm sorry. This seems to be a little chaotic today. Um, but we appreciate you guys. Be safe out there. And I'm going to hand over the camera. I mean, not the camera. The microphone to Norman. Hello. It's cloudy today. It's, it's cloudy today. Very cloudy today. Finally, the winter is here. Okay, go on. Be careful, don't hang up. Watch out. Can I still go? No. Yes. Yeah, now I got it. Hey, I think I need to re renegotiate a contract for next year. Which is nothing to nothing. <laughs> Double nothing is still nothing. Are we on? Yeah, you are on. Okay. Okay, so last week, hi, my name is Nomi Fong. And I think we got some new member. I think this is our 36th podcast. 30, is it 36 or 37? Yeah. Last week I talked about the the Pathipedium for the winter time. And but you know the Pathipedium is just a big group, so I decided to separate out the uh, what we call the multi floor. Okay. And how many of you? I want to show hand. How many grow even grow Pathipedium? Okay, how many of you grow the multi floor? Anybody? Okay, so the multi floor lady stepper, uh, by definition, is unlike the multi type or some other, obviously has more than two, uh, more than one flower. But most of the multi floor 
lady slipper, like the the regular lady slipper, uh, they from the tropical Asia. Okay, uh, some of them might be intermediate grower, uh, but majority of them, if you leave it perfect for under light, perfect for window sill in house, and if you live in Florida, perfect because they will be grow like we. Uh, and a lot of time, if you go down, if you have a whole cold snap, that you had to move all your vendor or fair enough in the house. The lady supper, it's okay. They can go down to 48, okay? But keep the print, the media dry, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I don't have a lot of ladies, I'll put multi-floor in flower right now, because by definition, most of the multi-floor are these summer bloomer. They, they like the, the long day and warm night. But I do have a few of this. Uh, this is kind of very interesting cross. Uh, this is actually a L'Oreal Alba cross with Hainanian Adam. Okay. And don't worry, we will have a number for you later. Uh, most of the majority of the multi floor uh big print anything with low uh for example uh some of the new hybrid that the cross with laurei cross with smaller species that are uh, chamber denarianum uh this is the type is what we call sequential flower so anything if you cross this is called uh song of love uh it's a laurei like this but uh, the regular green form Cross with chamber denarianum. Uh, chamber denarianum is a species very similar to the, the novelty phenomenopsis. They're from Malaysia or from Indonesia. It's the, the spike can keep blooming and blooming for almost uh, two years, three years. So you do have some uh, more uh, cross breeding, okay? And very similar to the tropical uh, framing pitting from South America. It, it just never cut, they just keep blooming, all right? So, majority of the most, uh, I would say 90% of the, 75%, 90% of the Laurei uh, species are the, the big one. Okay, I'm gonna cut out the spike. Uh, if you never have a, a multi floor before, uh, I recommend go with a species first. Okay, uh, for, the, for example, the Laurei, uh, or primary. Philippinensis and any of this type of they will do really well with the fanonosis that you have in your collection. Okay, but with it, there's always an exception. Like this is the new type of Laurei. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Uh, okay, this is the new type of Laurei right here. And there's a number here. Now, if you're familiar with the Laurei, regular green form of Laurei is about this big. Now, this is the new type of Laurier called Laurier Richandarianum, okay, is the new miniature species form of the Laurier. And the flower usually, uh, they can actually, for me, they can flower up to twice a year. Uh, if you go in warm, indoor, this is from March, and they flower on the new grow, okay, most of the daily zipper, uh, the monica, but not the monica, the symposium, but they always flow on the new growth. So, the, uh, so this is the type of new laurei. So not all the multi floor are the big plants. So they, you do have a choice. Uh, another one that is very nice for species is uh, uh, Diantem, okay? Uh, Diantem is from uh, Yunnan, China, or no, uh, a border of the with the uh, uh, Thailand, and by definition, Diantem means two flower. Okay, this is the alba form. Okay, you, you notice that this, the Diantem is very small, very compact versus the Loria type here. So the uh, multi flower does offer something uh, different in size, and the flower spike is about this tall. So this is. Uh, I was in actually uh, in Yunnan, China about 20 years ago, and I, I was on a consultation job for a tissue culture laboratory, and I visited uh, a collection of the species, and in the natural habitat, 
in China, Southeast Western China, Dian Tan is more than two flowers. So I don't know when maybe the first species specimen or the sample shipped to the West Coast, uh, they only found the two flower. But I, I asked the, the uh, bot, botany, uh, botanical co collector, he said, yeah, uh, minimum is two flower, but they can have three or sometimes even seen it with four flower. So don't let the name uh, discourage you. you oh, only have two flower. Paphupedium dianthem can have more than two flower. Okay, so this is all about form. All right, Brian, can I have a number? Okay, good. So the media, the Paphupedium, the multi floor, they like the alkaline condition. So a lot of this species in the wild, they actually go on top on top of the the decay uh, uh, soil or decay uh, leaf. Some of them even go on the on the top of the limestone. So they like high pH right, on the, on the uh, alkaline side. So the choice of the media, I will usually use fur bark, but there's always a session in I've been because. Every party situation is different. Uh, oh, we have earthquake. This is Brian. <laughs> okay, Brian. Uh, the some of you might be uh, uh, from my previous podcast before. My water here in the summertime in Southern California is eight point five. It's very organized. Okay, so it's perfect for for a lot of my my pathopedium. and the whole nursery. We just use tap water, okay? If it, uh, we don't want to go to the expense of going reverse osmosis water because in, it's not particle. It's not particle for us in Southern California because every one gallon of the reverse osmosis water will take seven gallon of tap water to make. Okay, so a lot of time we have a lot of uh, washer ration in, in Southern California, so. My philosophy always that if it could go here, it would my tap water, and I don't even we don't even use fungicide. Uh, Paphipedium multiflora is one of the few genus that lady zipper Paphipedium. They do they really don't need fungicide that much, you know. By providing them a good air movement, never get the water rain water stay in the crown. So if you in South, in South Florida or Florida, it, and they like shade anyway, so don't put it right under. I seen it when I was in Florida. Uh, can, uh, people put it underneath the venda. Might be okay in the summertime, but in the wintertime with the cold, or if you have a, don't have an area that get, get a lot of good air movement, you're gonna have a crown rot here. So I would recommend in South Florida or, or any or even Texas you can go to the outdoor for example in the summertime put it under your gutter okay so the the, the rain water do not get on the leaf and or just providing an area by a couple panel of the fiberglass so if you do have a lot of rain in your area in the summertime like New Jersey for example everybody put their orchid outdoor they love to be outdoor in the summertime just have a shelter area so they don't got rain on too much. Okay, so I haven't been experimenting with the moss. Everybody know I, I like moss. Okay, but the moss is actually is good. The reason I generally like moss because in the fresh moss, the pH to start with is about four four point five. Okay, that's why moss. A lot of people kind of. Uh, Red flag, oh, moss is terrible. No, you started with a good quality of the moss, okay? Uh, sometimes I was at a Home Depot the other day and I saw some kind of package. It's, it's actually the spanning moss, but the, the one that they use for annual basket, but for some reason they put orchid there. No, even if it's an orchid moss, if it's really dirty spanning moss that they just pick it from the, you know, for the floors, those only last for six months, and that's why they use it for honey basket, for annual honey basket. Do not use those because they have so much pathogen. Uh, most of the orchid moss uh, is actually uh, the best quality is from cherry uh, and New Zealand. But uh, but you don't really don't need to spend that much money for New Zealand moss. Uh, 
cherry moss is good. Uh, this is actually the farmers, actually farm them. Okay, and the it's a, a special type of species of the moss. Uh, they go about three years to harvest. So I'm going to show you is. Yes, you can grow them in the moss. Okay, this is very dry, when it, and versus the wet. Okay, and with our water high pH, 8.5, when I test the pH coming down on the water pump below, it's average out. It's about 5.7, 5.8. Okay, to uh to about seven, depending on the uh, area. So even at 5.8, they're still okay. And I want to show you the, the root area. Okay, see here? Uh, there's a new root coming up. Uh, lady slipper, a path repaired in the multi floor. They really do not like to dry out. Just like what I said last week. They really do not have a lot of area that is catalytic to store the water. Uh, path, uh, multi floor, a lot better than the multi type. Multi floor is, the leaf is actually thicker. So. They do store some water themselves, but whatever the main that you use, make sure it also good root re re retention. Okay, uh, but if you well, uh, if you go in the moss, okay, when it wet, it's dark. This when it dry, it's lighter, and you can also do it by by the weight method. Okay, let me put this out of the way. Okay, how are we doing so far? Okay, uh, now this is very important. Buy multi floor. Okay, never buy multi floor less than five or six inches in size. Uh, Sometimes, you know, I always want to, Curtis, if you're in Florida, say hello. Uh, you never uh, buy the multi floor, for example, anything with rush out there in a hybrid. Rothschild area is one of the slowest grower. Uh, never buy them. Like, well, my, one of my judges in uh, friend in Louisiana refer us to eyelash size. Sometimes in the eBay, people will try to make a quick box. They will buy the flask and then get out of the flask and buy it in, put it in the mouth uh, and in the in one pot and sell it. You know, maybe $15, $7, $10. It's not worth it. Okay, but well, a lot of time, by the time, for example, this is a, a Centenarian hybrid. Uh, with Federal Peninsula, it's called Hongsam Eagle. Okay, guess how old this plant is? Anybody wanna guess how old? Five year, anymore? Six year, okay. This one, from, from out of frost, from this size, what I call eyelash size, to here. It's about six to seven years, and that this is the, the multi floor. Is anything with most uh, we rush out there again. The That's why when you, on my website, uh, we might not only only website do is spend time and like with my with my uh, uh, friend uh, Richard Hall, we do a lot of times writing description because most of the website don't even tell you the truth to to tell you how long they might. Uh, they take them to flower. Uh, but uh, this is what sometimes, unless you are like Brian, Brian, only 25, you know, he can wait. He can wait. He can have so many seven years or 10 years or, or Brandon. Uh, you want to buy them booming size, okay? The biggest size you can afford. Because, by the, think about this. By the time from frost, from this size to this size to the booming size in five to seven years, the grower, or take a loss, about 20 to 30 percent loss because every stage you might, might die. And in my case, my son done because we don't do fungicide, it might be a little bit higher. But the chances are when you buy the eyelash side from eBay, for example, and it's in, I've seen a lot of those. Well, first of all, you don't even know. It takes seven years to find out if they are really true of what they advertise. And a lot of the uh, people in the business or uh, 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 you know what, the, what we call the uh, scammer sometimes they went by advertise oh really cheap but, uh, but they were going to be shipping from from thailand for you and they're going to ship Beru. okay remember that what i said last time last week path repairing 
the root do not like to dry out. So you make out the plant, and but it's, uh, the root is so dry out, they will never to recover. All right, so the lady stepper multi-floor, just like the puffy painted last week, okay? They also have hair, root hair. Can you do a close up right here? Okay. This is why sometimes the moss work because they really do that. They really like moisture in the root area. And any of this root hair here dry out is almost too harsh for the leaf. Okay, this they're not a venda. Venda you can ship bare root in all fan analysis. They have succulent root. Pathopedium have a lot of hair. So once those hair are dry out. That's pretty much it for the Pathopedian, or in this case, Motifor. They are very unforgiving on the dry media. So with a lazy zipper, okay, in the, during the growing season, if you're not sure, and especially you you uh, you put them in the orchid park, make like this one here, you always water them, okay. All right, so this is the perfect example of the, the multi floor with the Rothschild Denarinum or Sanarina. They from the single growth, they will keep growing and growing and growing. They tap up to they will not flower until they reach maturity of minimum five years. And that this one is for example is going to flower this coming late spring or summer. So what we do in the in the winter time right now is you notice that the lady separate in the moss, they still retain some of the older leaf. And this leaf is going to turn yellow. So don't worry. Okay, this is seven years old. This is maybe from six, seven years ago. So because they, they are keep growing in the winter time, it's in particular they're gonna flower next year. They're gonna lose a leaf. Okay, they still slowly turn yellow. Do not color them out, just let it gradually turn yellow. Okay, so that way the detached area will be all sealed, so you never worry about the infection, okay? And a lot of time, on the older leaf, see? That's all from, from the new old shoot. Just make sure it's a good housekeeping. I want to, you want to cut off all this dead stuff. We have over at least 10,000 fan of perfect pedium. I wish we could do every take care, every plant that you have at home, but don't worry. This is the back side, okay? The back side is older, so they're gonna be gradually, they're gonna die, die back because they're gonna have a new one coming up from here. So the back one, if they turn yellow, don't worry. This part of the senescence, this part of the, the growth process, you know, the tree, for the, the older leaf will drop off as long as you have a new growth coming up right here all right so how are we doing so far good good so winter time right now unless you go under light okay under light even you cut down to 12 hours a day it's good to do the practice so the plant will sense the, the change of season and your room power gonna get in cooler and and, and day temperature and night temperature, okay? And still do not they do not let them dry out, period. Pathopedium, even in the winter time, still keep them on the moist side, okay? Because remember, Pathopedium have hair. They, they, once the hair dry out, it's almost plants go down here. Yeah, those hair dry out, they cannot put out any water, okay? And the feeding, uh, those of you new, we still, free everything of Fison. Okay, this is the Fison. You can get it uh, from the nursery. Uh, a teaspoon. The the label says tablespoon. Okay, I don't I don't buy that. Okay. Uh, my own experience is tablespoon. Teaspoon per gallon of water and uh, once a month. Do not mix with fertilizer, do not mix with makeup dry, nothing. Just peel a teaspoon per gallon of water and water all your in, uh, collection. Pathopedium carolia. That will prevent uh, any fungus. Uh, they actually, actually kill virus protein on contact. And by doing so, 
you're going to pay your party media last one extra year because they're going to eliminate some of the fungi that might appear in the bark or sometimes in the moss. So it's a good practice. It's a proven, it's a one practice I, it's proven for me for over 20 years, 25 years. And now it's, once we're getting going, we don't have to use fungicide, you know. But look at this leaf. The plant are happy. They have that natural wax. And this natural wax is what it protect from fungi infection, from the spotted from the leaf. Okay, and then with a combination of the my fertilizer, okay, I used to feed them. That's why I formulated formulate because I have at least a million plant here somewhere at any given time. But uh, uh is uh something that you can you can use year round on all genus and then Fison, Megatry, and then make uh Megatry every other week. Because very very important that you do feed your orchid. Uh, especially Pathopedium uh, this time of year because they are going to be from this coming summer. So if you don't feed them, okay, uh, nutrient, they're going to even they're going to have even more leaf turn yellow or uh, early senescence. You know, garbage in, garbage out. You don't feed them right now. Next year, they might skip the flower, or they don't give you that many flower count. Okay, so that is the lady zipper. Pathopedium, do not repot them right this time of year, okay? Uh, because the the only time that you do repot them is when the, when the flower spike broken or finished, and uh, and then also do not let the pathopedium or multi floor path do not let that be overpotted. Look at the size of plant, still in the four inch pot, three and a half inch pot, and they're happy with it, okay? And I, I, in, and the, okay, and the meat party media is good. In theory, I can leave it without repotting it until next summer when this one finish, and the new shoe come out at this four to six inches, and then you repot it. And then you can repot it to a, uh, maybe a four inch pot. Then do not, you always from, do not over, over pot them. Uh, over pollen is, is actually very devastating. It's gonna hold too much water, and and that's about it. You know, multi floor is actually uh, very easy. And then this from because the low day, low, low uh, because the low t uh, day temperature and lower light intensity, it's okay to put your multi floor closer to the window, get better light. You can because the light intensity is lower, so you can maximize your light. Or if you go under the light, sometimes there's a trick that you can reverse it higher so you can get closer to your lamp, okay? But Jeff, you might have a light is coming up specific for Catalia, right? Okay, so if you, when Jeff come up with another specific, uh, he been doing, we've been doing some uh, the experiment. Uh, I encourage Jeff to branch up even for because sometimes you, your light, you have different layer. Uh, specific for higher light intensity, that Catalia and Venda even get more result, okay? Uh, this is the new ones up This now. is the new one? Okay, great. So before you have, if you have a, the all light that's for perfect uh, fan analysis, this time of year, you can actually get put uh, another pot and raise it higher. So that way it will increase the light intensity but later on when Jeff has a new light specific for the carrier vendor so the multi floor do like more light than the lurgated pathopedium like the Maori type the species so uh, they can take as much light as carrier as long as you don't burn you don't you don't have the burn the leaf in the, in the winter time you can I, I got it with 2000 foot candle and up the carrier yes Jamie has a question. Okay. I just added another light to my twenty fours for my for winter. Yep. I didn't have light, so I added Brian. another thirty six. We'll do this one. Vertical to supplement my my twenty fours on the bookshelf. Right, Jeff? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, too, so yeah. So any of the laurea with loud uh, feta penensis, 
uh, Laurier, uh, even Russia Dairy, and this time of year, get a lot of light because they're flying this March. Yes. Yeah. Roger. So you, you have lots of lights. What about duration uh, during winter time? Uh, what would you recommend the duration of lights? The multi floor they are long. They, they remember where the species coming from in Malaysia. Okay. Very the equit uh, is very similar to the the location like in homestead area. So right now, uh, we don't get light until four o'clock. So if you can providing them more light, it's actually better. So most of the, my customer in Miami, for example, they're gonna fly two months earlier than I do here in California, because we don't get sun by four o'clock. They pitch dark for a couple of months, okay? But in Florida right now, we still have longer day and warmer day temperature, okay? so. But if you go under light, if you have 12 hours uh, light, no problem. This is why this is such a new trend. Hey, if you have a kid that go out of college now, you have an empty nest, use that room to grow, to turn into a grow light. And I do have a customer that with him, uh, he's a good a friend of mine, he worked for Disney World. Uh, he just convert one of his entire room. Uh, like he live in Florida, okay, in Orlando area. He moved all his fan and offices indoor now. He didn't have to. I said, why do you want to do that? I thought you can do it outdoor. Yeah, he said, but, but, but Norman, when I put them in the house, I do have had to spare as much. I don't have to worry about all the insect problems that have been in Florida. The mite and drink is a lot easier to control under light in the house. So I wish I could have the, the, the new light is available for me when I was growing up and go orchid in the 70, you know. All we do is just go uh, cool white. Uh, they're okay for under for or take it out of frost. They grow the leaf, but they do not have the ottoman red UV and blue UV for flowering. You know, I don't care what kind of light you buy. You know, there's always cheaper one, but let me tell you, Jeff Light is the one that I do recommend because they great result. If it any light, I don't care. It's an Amazon or how cheap they are. The, the label might say, oh yeah, it work for light. It was, it work for orchid. Well, just like the orchid fertilizer, I, you know, that's, this is why I for, uh, we, I formulated my own orchid food back in the 80 when I was in Cal Poly. A lot of, a lot of these uh, fertilizer formulation, for example, 20, 20, 20, yeah. well, the, you got to look at detail, the tables in the detail, the, the combination of the nit nitrogen source, nitrate and, and, and the, the compost component, almost like cooking. All right, and these are all the chemistry. These are all the photos is composed by the chemists. Okay, do they grow orchid? Do they have not the best ultimate growth for orchid? No. Okay, when I was UC Riverside, you know, my 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 classmate, they are great botany student, but all they know is to analyze the data, the measurement of the leaf the fresh way and the dry way, but are they usually, do you want to have a leaf of your fernanas to have the biggest leaf span? <laughs> or the heaviest method? On, on paper, on data, it's okay. But in reality, only us, the horticulturists, we have the eye and experience to know is this is really optimum ratio, the result for the orchid. So this is why we, we formulate Norman orchid food, and I encourage Jeff, uh, we even go one step further. We do the, the brighter light for Catalia and Vanda. And that will be one area for, for your Pathipedium, the multi floral type. Uh, Phetopenensis, for example. Uh, the beautiful print, they, they, they're very, if you put in a nice pop, it's almost like the, the Chinese and you know, Very, very graceful. All right. Are we doing okay? Pathipedium is a piece of, it's, a, it's a easy. Okay, why don't you just follow? You know, less is more, okay? Do not over pamper them, okay? Do not, over, do not, every time if you read something on the internet or somebody, uh, somebody makes somebody, she have a new, uh, do not try any new method on the entire collection until you try a couple of them. Or just write to support Uh There's so many new sensation, you know, uh, it's on the internet, it's not, I would look at some of the videos and say, oh my God, you know, banana for your orchid. <laughs> or what are the new ones? Some kind of tea. 
for for the orchid. Uh, keep it simple. If we do not recommend and uh, and try to avoid any of the of what we call organic fertilizer. Okay, uh, like fish, uh, seaweed. Okay, I personally I don't like like some of the so-called seaweed. Uh, because you can get a more consistent with mega thrive and the fertilizer. Uh, uh, the seaweed, okay, uh, are they from Gulf of Mexico? Are they from Holland? Are they from the cold water, warm water? Just like when you eat your oyster, you always want to know the best oyster is from the cold water. Alaska, Oregon, Washington. The one from Oyster Bay. Oyster from the, the tropical water, you're gonna have a lot more bacteria. Same thing with seaweed because are they cold process or are they pressurized? When they pressurize, they kill a lot of the beneficial stuff. And then every batch is different. So you're gonna have inaccurate result. And that's enough in, in my training background. And as a commercial grower, I cannot have this kind of irrational result because I grow orchid for a living. And if one goof up, I might lost more of my income the whole entire year or some of the five year investment on this. Okay, so be on the orchid, a little bit be more conservative, not just on perfect pedium, on any orchid. Okay, and I wanna, on the last note, I wanna share with you uh, my mentor, uh, Ernest Hennington. Okay, uh, multi floor lady zipper, if it's legit, they are always gonna be more expensive, okay? Uh, because the time it invests, if it's too good to be true, if it, you, the advice that Ernest Hennigan told me is, hey Norman, in orchid, if it's so cheap, or somebody offer you some really cheap orchid, the first thing you ask is, what's wrong? Okay, and I take it too hard because you have avoided me a lot of stuff. I, one year, this is true, I was at Fallout of the Show, and this one guy was selling Vanda this big. And with the root this big, it was sold for twenty five dollar piece. Everybody say, "Oh, this is a great deal." And I, no matter what you think, and I took a look at it because I've been to the event of how, how I've been to Thailand a lot before. And I say, uh, "I said, have you even occurred to you a vanda with this big of flower in Thailand have not even flower yet?" Ah, she done it. There's something wrong with it. Maybe in the process in cloning, they become mutated. The big, it's about five years old, even in Thailand station, never even flowering. And the guy was selling that, you know, he's passed away now. He was uh, putting, it was so big and the, the root was so long, all right? He, the only way he can put it in there is in the 35 gallon black trash bag. I think, yeah, that's what, they belong to should be that should be dumped in Thailand, trash, and there should not any legitimate conscious nurseryman should not even buy that because he's not better than that. So if some good deal good, uh, took a deal, that Ernest Hennington, you know, the store orchid, the, the, one of the greatest American orchid hybridizer, you ask the vendor, what's wrong? How can that big clone? Tissue culture for twenty five dollar or twenty, you know, twenty or three for fifty. <laughs> Having even flowered them is us. What's wrong? Okay, so that's it. So anytime next time you see a a a, a good deal of Pafipedium on the eBay, all right, be careful because there are a lot of it, the Pafipedium multi flow take five to seven years. So if you're somebody, if she's something that's this big, I had customers offer or email me and I said, what do you think? I said, uh, no, it's not any good deal. This is 25 or you want to wait another five year and then maybe pay $50 for it. Do your math. And then, uh, buy, always buy your Pathipedium, especially multi fraud for the legit nursery in America. Anything five by five account from overseas, the chances are you're gonna get uh, not so good a quality or even possible or wrong 
label. All right. Thank you. So that's it for the lady stepper because I do have a lot of customer. I don't want, I do not want to see customer or my customer got burned. Okay. Uh, so now you, I just disclosed the dirty secret of the business on lady stepper. <laughs> All right. Let's do the show and tell. Oh, the first one. Okay. This is the one that I had this for what? four months, five months. I, I always want, uh, I don't want to offer at that time. Uh, this is the one of the best one. Uh, we flower them, Asian Spotted Eagle. It was the mutation to begin with. The regular form is uh, yellow with red spot, okay. But in through the course of the uh, tissue culture, uh, this is a case of good mutation, all right. Uh, but we don't know. Jeff, Jeff gave you a good name called 50-50. Okay, even though I, we publicate this, we do a micro division. We don't know until the flower, okay. So there's maybe 50%, they, they might reverse, okay. Or they might retain the pyloric. But even the pyloric, the expression of this pyloric, they all, they, they might be some lag cap come come out. The one that look at nine cap state. So we offer you this one price. I think forty five. I love this plant because they're small. Look at how compact. This is a very this is original plant. This is by six eight years old. They're still very compact plant. So we have grown it out. This is out of flask. Brian, can you tell me? Uh, this is out of flask almost three years now. So. Uh, it's a good plan to have, okay? So if you feel lucky, I have a, I can, Eric have a special, you, buy, you can buy two. The increase the chance, uh, two for 80. So, uh, anybody want to take a chance? Go, go for it. Uh, we will all, we'll, we'll follow them, and then we are the selected, the mutation one, uh, and then grade them up. There will be higher prices at the time, but this is kind of fun. Uh, Either Try way, your luck. Either way, either way, it's beautiful. If either way, it is a good plant. Even at reverse to the normal form, the flower lasts. This is what Sunny would say, frozen in time. This one she's been here for about four months now, right? This has been open for four months. We already. should have a little contest. Everybody if, that buys them this stage should post the yes. Have a contact the pictures when they, yeah. This is why I said I offer this. We'll see how many go. Yeah, because way. I offer this. It's more economical to get it now versus other, like a, another next May when we flower them, and let's have fun with this because they're already in spike. And look at the root. I'm taking ten. I'm going for hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I'm going to put them on jumper. Okay, so Brian, so this is the, yeah, but, okay, next one. Yeah, oh, Carolia. Okay, this is MC2335, and I love this. This is a nice, nice, uh, it's from Japan. It's Tupiosa hybrid. So Tupiosa is half, parent of the very famous American called Puppy Love uh, from Stewart. So this has Harrisona in the background. So this one always a good winter. And uh, they, they fall twice a year. Now and uh, Mother's Day. And Mother's Day get bigger flower. But the best part about this one here is the compact, okay? It's very compact and big flower. I can, I can flower up to four flowers in the summertime, all right? And it's fragrance too. Ooh. Okay, I'm very proud, proud of, this is my strand of Bonina Sururiae. And this, I have several strands, but this strand is also very good for winter blooming. And they, even at cooler temperature, they still, the energy bunny, they still going and going. So this is Bernina Sururia, perfect for under light, okay? And if you live in Florida, brush your heart. You can very good for mounted. Okay, and oh, the fragrance is so strong. And then this is one of Stani's favorite. 
but not one of those frozen in time fragrant multi floor okay and this is the first attempt of uh, this is actually had novelty fan analysis in the background this have banana in the background and that's how they get the fragrance from okay so all right we're gonna do this all right so this is another one uh and a lot of time you never cut the spike off they just gone on for four or five years they will keep warming from the tips and every spring gonna have a new spike coming up okay so this is yafan uh, yafan perfume uh oh yafan pink bee sweetheart okay so we sold out of this two years ago so we're able to bring it back again god my son's not an infomercial <laughs> okay now this one here i'm going to show you this can we show the back of carrier that's the Porangiana. it's this one here all right this is the mother print Right. So it can go outdoor. Calaria Porangia hybrid. The each spike is up to 15 flower, and this is the, the chrome for you, Eric. We can we take a shot of this again when they fall open? Okay. All right. So this is another one. And next. Okay, we have a two cute miniature. Okay, another. One of my my award is I think I showed it last before, but now it's open. Uh, flower get bigger, but the fragrance. Okay, if you go Calaria, that this is actually the fragrance of Tipiana, and they will get big. This is Chrono uh, Ishin Spot Eagle Montclair. My my award AMAOS uh, is another one of those frozen in time. You feel the flower, you close your eye, it always plastic. Okay, fragrance. Perfect. If you like miniature, and a crystal like miniature. And this is one of the wearable orchid. <laughs> All right. And this one here, oh, the species. Uh, then this is the pink species. Uh, NF, the number here. And this is, I think it's from Costa Rica or one of the uh, Central America. Uh, they rebroom on the old can and look at this all this spikes coming up here and this is just in a small pot perfect food in a basket outdoor i still can put this outdoor in southern california they are okay down to about 45. the leaf might be dropped some but they keep booming so this is a wonderful uh uh species uh, sequential boomer species uh belong to align uh carrier alliances okay no, G. Darryl Green War. What a. Now, this is one of the best Harlequin yellow. And it's, you, you do want, everybody need to have one of this in their collection because it not only is an easy grower, look at the forties on this. Uh, it's, we also have several hybrid of this, so it could not be a, a good parent. So. Uh, it's, it's soon, soon going to be a really, really uh, classic. So you do want, so you do want to have a bragging right that to, to be the first one in your sh uh, society when the show, when the uh, the show is, and uh, okay, show opened up next year. Okay. I think we did not that before. Oh, wow! What up? If you're looking for novelty. Look at the size of flower. Can you, can you see the shine, the shine to it? Hi, right, producer. See it? We got it. Good. The leaf. Okay. This chrome, we sold out three years ago. Now we're able to bring it back. I don't bring back, we don't repeat ourselves a lot. But this is a few orchid I think is deserved to be in in collection. The only trouble is the slow grower. But the flower individual flower can last about three months and then this the sequential they don't produce a lot of flower because of the size okay if you like orchid fanalas orchid wall okay this is just an orchid wall except more compact it's red it's almost a red version of orchid wall and the fragrance is equal or surpass orchid wall okay but sometimes orchid will get larger print all right thank you oh bottle okani 
we almost sold out of this one if you had this one in your sh in your wish list in your uh basket, shopping basket oh it's gonna be all gone by before christmas because everybody visited coming for the for the, here for the show this for valentine's for is look at the sheen for perfect for the holiday and they will last they will keep booming right the weather this is flower for the summertime uh uh, first flower stars will open in August and, and they will gradually open as the cool weather cool off you get more from the tip so you're gonna fall all the way to uh, Valentine's even possible Mother's Day so this is one of those another frozen in time and it stays small it's a miniature so novelty they don't have fragrance that's a, that's a, that's the that's the, the downside but the flower and perfect for under light okay Ooh, this is the one. The one that looks like remember this is a hanging basket of dendrovium like almost six to eight feet, ten feet long. Is this one here? All right. And this is the dendrovium, the primary. One of this going to uh, Huntington. Okay, we donate one for the collection. Uh, primary species are low from Philippines. Okay, so and I purposely do not want to take this out, okay? Uh, in the winter time, the can naturally dry off, but they do not need, require a cold snap, like Yamamoto dendrovian or the Nobio type, okay? But they do generically, when the, the, the short day, cooler temperature, all the leaves will drop off, okay? So that's okay. That's part of, of genetics. So once when this drop off, do you see here? Once they drop off, the area that leaf drop off, they have in no. emerging. But so by the time next March, you get long day, warmer than temperature, the flower bud will go develop. So this is the crown that I can't record. If I go, oh my god. Uh, yes, it is that uh, they they just love the heat. And in the summertime, when I grow in this, I when I got a, a, a grower, you know, they they probably get from note. Okay, I, I had to import this from my friend. That that this, and I can I swear they almost like growing an inch a day like this. So genetically, you can put it in the back if you have a greenhouse, uh, put it in the basket, hang it high because the the greenhouse. The heat rises. They, they love the heat. You cannot. They from, uh, the species from Philippines. They love the heat. Or you can put it in a basket. Uh, even even going under light, genetically they're gonna go this waterfall. So it's still it's still manageable. Uh, it's a wonderful wonderful thing. Uh, only propagate by note. So what the grower do is after the finish of flower, one note give you one plant. That's how you propagate. This is not mass produced that's the only way and the, the corner this is the he select this one from thousand of seeding okay because the, the breeder out of this particular one is he got the two best one from vietnam okay so and it that's where the species come from all right so this is we never seen this before and then what this will be one of the uh what I call the bragging right. <laughs> okay. All right. We, do, we still have a few of this. So get this. And this, the spike is, will be coming up soon. Okay. So get it now because once you start spiking, uh, it's almost too long to ship. And then we had to charge a lot, represent the, the shipping charge. So get it now because it's still, it's pendulum right now. Okay. So this is the uh, Tony Temple that I should want to show you. I love this one here. This is the Loria album. We hang any album album. Okay, so we still have some of the boom inside. It, it flowers twice a year. This is why I like this one. See here? The new girl is getting ready for next spring. Twice a year. You're gonna have two seasons out of one year. This is why some of the newer multi floor, okay, is so exciting right now because it's, uh, even though the, the leaf might be big but it's so vigorous okay this, this is the alba form of the ten, tony temple and the size is manageable for under light or indoor okay oh michael cooper with. this is the uh the picture that i use for today michael cooper is sending rihanna by 
Philippines and Centennial is very expensive. So this micro cupboard is what I call uh, poor man's uh, poor man's uh, Centennial. Uh, this is five years old. This is booming size, and this size will flower this coming spring. Okay, so micro cupboard is very easy. They're a lot easier than Centennial by itself, and you go really well with an analysis. And they still give you the really nice long petal of Sandriana, but better than Sandriana because the color from Fedapanensis on the petal. Okay, so really you really available for this size. Alright. And Charles is in season again. Look at this. The waxy Charles and the foliage. Can you see the foliage? Oh, on the light, you can see even almost a Bengal cat spotted. And they do not need a lot of space. And the, all this growth coming up, you're going to have more flowers. So, Chao uh once we sold out, the next time we have this available, it might be another four years. This will take that long if we bring it back again. Okay, Chao Wosiai. Okay, and they can flower starting in the summer. Uh, I, I think Elaine Taylor had one that was. The first time we offered an inspect was uh, summer, but they this is actually the, the, the season again for them. They can sequential because there's so many growth on it. And American Beauty, Puffy Patium, one of my good hybrid. The one that, this is one of the best vini color. Uh, get the get the don't uh, get the regular booming size or near booming size because they call that we uh, and we every print that with American Beauty. We always select the vinyl color, so you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be all vinyl color, the wine color, right? Oh, a lot of the path. Okay. Another, another wonderful species, Venustum, compact, waxy. Uh, do not require a cold period like some of the bottle type. Uh, so, all right. And here's another. Oh wow, this is the species, Phetopanensis. Okay, this is the Phetopanensis Robertinia form that had really uh, curl pillow. Uh, Crystal will give you a link to the picture. Check it out. This is the four, I think it's about four or five years old Phetopanensis. Very, very handsome print. Okay, we only use the best species for breeding. And this is for Crystal. Look at, look at the micro mini. Pafiperium, look how pretty the leaf. Okay, so on the light for those of you. And look at this. They just like energy bunny, they go and on and then another scroll coming up. So this is the type, do not divide them. Okay, they don't take the much room. Don't divide them. They could get them going. They just you're gonna have flower all year round from every new growth. Have flower and this is a very good strand of body germ. Okay. Here's another strand of our Philippinensis. I right now this well, timing is really good. This is the first time I had two different strands of Philippinensis available, and this is the uh, two of my awarder. Okay, this strand is actually original strand we get from uh, Parfenatic from Narito and Hasagawa and Kyo Cooperwood. So this is another different option of the Fedepanensis, okay? I like about the Fedepanensis, that the newest Fedepanensis, compact leaf, and always get grassy, all right? Okay, and, and on Sedum Alliances, all right? Eric over there used to do a lot of on Sedum breeding, and this is a nice one. Now it's open now, look at, look at how handsome print is. Always give it to Spike. And this is a Tahoma Gracia hybrid. And so a Tahoma Gracia back to the warm growing Miltonia. And get cut down on the spike lane. Beautiful leaf. And you can get it now in, they are two spikes. Every one of them is two spikes. So uh, don't wait too long. I think this will be gone for Christmas. Okay. Uh, almost there. This is the uh, this is the the Laurier new species that I mentioned about. 
is not big plan. This is a Laurier Regina compact. This is the number. And I still have a few of the uh, Diantan album. Okay. They just finished flower in the summer. But now I have a new girl coming up for the following year. So this is the perfect example when I say the multi floor the species of hybrid does not take a lot of room. So if you if a, if a space is named for you, these two are the one to have. Oh, we have a lot of interest in Phalaenopsis elantator, and this is the blue tetrapus, and we Jacantia alba that we have. I think the Jacantia alba is still here. I think it's over on the side. Uh, it's okay. over here somewhere. Never mind. There's a oh. correction here. Saloya Uh, so this is the Loria hybrid, uh, the, no, not Loria, but Chagantia Alba. Uh, I just registered as a Fenanas Elen Taylor. Okay, so this is gorgeous. Elen is a good friend of mine. I know her since we, we was yeah since yesterday. Uh, look at the leaf. Okay, this is from Chagantia Alba. Okay, and they are booming size. Okay, so even uh, and this is about four years old and. Very good. I, I would just go the leaf along, and you can you can put it in a basket, hand them out. They love. Uh, they like uh, bright and cool light. Okay. So everybody gonna have start flowering. Uh, there's two three sizes available, so you can start flowering, and next year and post what your version of elantator. <laughs> so I think elantator bring by a lot of this. Okay. This is the last one. Okay. Now we have a species. Okay, Carrie, can we make sure this is available on the website? Corisei, uh, and Greg them Corisei from South America. Okay, and I actually one year I was judging in uh, Cali, Colombia, and I met the grandson of the person who described it. So it was quite special. But this is the one that. Uh, Call as a tulip orchid. So it's online. Okay, don't worry. Uh, Crystal, make sure you got this. This is the famous uh, tulip and great them. The flowers is fragrance. And for uh, uh, Crystal, for example, if they have a cold snap in Florida, they be outside. They love to have the cold snap uh, before the flower. So it's a, a wonderful species strain that I'm very proud to be able to offer them again. And the last one, but not the least. Okay. The Anguetum, Superdedalia, the Orchid of Pemmentan. Okay, this is the stage right now. Gordon with the Phanonosis and the flower spike, the flower can be the like seven inches. And it's gonna be, it's gonna later this year because we have a source of heat wave. Uh, it should be flower for Christmas if you go on the light or for the, for the new year for the, uh, January the month of January F an amazing amazing fragrance so this is the uh, conclude what I'll show until today and we still have another session next week okay and next week for the fell fanatics you're doing a special yes special presentation yes I have a uh, which this week is our last happen and for the and uh, the topic will be the standard fan analysis because everybody you know the big the big fan analysis the you the new fan analysis coming to season now so i'm going to tell you some of the trick that you can do uh for next week and then also if you have fail fanatic member my talk on the updated the the new color phone of fan analysis species so can they join if they're not member yet Okay. Contact okay. Contact us. Okay, they will contact you uh, if you choose to join. There's a benefit uh, for Fail Fanatic. It's a good uh, nonprofit that we actually trying to raise scholarship 
for future horticulture students who's interested in orchid. Uh, and we love the next generation of grower. You know, when I was in school, there's no scholarship. You know, they don't teach orchid at all. So we love, we need a future little uh, Norman <laughs> and Brian uh, and Brian or Brandon. Uh, I hope we have a next generation of grower uh, special interest in orchid, and then for the next generation of orchid hobbyists, uh, it, it, instead of just buying orchid from grocery store. No, thank you, and I see you next week. Uh, there's a correction on the number for this one. Okay, what about this one? It's available um, now. I'm it's, it's available now. Okay.